Hi, everybody. I want to tell you the story of Jupiter and comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. Now, that may be an unknown comet name to many of you, so I'm going to tell you real quick what happened. In 1994, uh, there was a comet that was orbiting Jupiter. It was just discovered in 1994. Uh, as many of you know, Jupiter is a very big planet, very massive planet. And the gravity of Jupiter had broken up this one comet into 21 pieces that made 21 individual separate comets. And each one of those 21 pieces crashed into the surface of Jupiter. Now, it was a really big deal if you were like an astronomy nut or worked at NASA. Uh, I happened to be a, an astronomy hobbyist in 1994. I was in high school. And so I was aware of what was happening. It was very televised. It also happened to be one of the first big internet events. Now, if you remember 1994, not a whole lot going on with the internet. Um, you know, computers still very big, bulky monitors, and you know, it's just nothing like it is today. And web pages back then are, were, you know, nothing like they are today either. But when this astronomical event happened where they discovered this comet and they found out it was going to crash into Jupiter and they thought, wow, this is our first attempt to actually watch an astronomical impact happen. And so NASA on their webpage broadcasted the event live. And it really was in history one of the first events that people watched and used the internet for. And the internet made it possible for people all over the world to watch this thing happen. That in and of itself is kind of historically significant that certainly it was the first comet impact we had ever seen, but it was also the first comet that was kind of broadcasted on the internet that people watched. So everybody's taking notice of this comet back in 1994. As I said earlier, it broke into 20, 21 separate pieces and each one of those pieces crashed into the surface of Jupiter now, at the time, no one knew what would happen. Uh, people weren't sure if it was going to be a, a major event, if it was going to be a dud, or if it was going to cause these huge explosions, if we'd even be able to see it from Earth. And everybody was shocked because when the comet hit the surface of the planet, it released these plumes of explosion that's, that in some cases were as big as the Earth. And the scars the, of, of dark cloud and dust and and uh, you know just burnt up everything that it left on Jupiter some of those scars were even bigger than the earth it was a major event it was the impact caused more damage to the surface of the planet although technically Jupiter doesn't have a solid surface but just the impact was released more energy than anyone uh, ever thought that they would see so it was a, it turned out to be a huge event and uh, of course everybody was very surprised here at Discover the Heavens Ministry, we are really interested in what these astronomical events mean. When we read Genesis chapter 1, and we see that God put all of these lights in the firmament, everything that's going on in the night sky is the firmament, and it says that God made the firmament to be there for signs and seasons and days and years. And of course, signs, that's, that's an important thing to us, and we know that the firmament does a great job of, uh, you know, telling us these signs of what's going on. And, you know, I've mentioned to many of you before, if you've read any books or read this blog, that, uh, you know, the Magi just had the firmament to tell them when and where to find Jesus. And, of course, it worked. It showed them how to find Jesus when he was born. So the firmament is wonderful at giving us signs about what's going on. Where are we in this story of humanity? So when we talk about these astronomical events, 
that's where we're coming from as a ministry is we want to know what does this mean to me the firmament is like god's overhead projector it's like when he wants to let the whole world be aware of something he will put it up in the night sky put it up in the sky because it's the one screen that the whole world can see and we're going to talk about some things that he's putting on the firmament in this blog and, and in these in the video blogs to come but to start with we just want to deal with what does jupiter mean what does a comet mean if these things are doing some interesting things in the firmament in the night sky what should that be telling us now if we just think back historically and we looked at jupiter jupiter has always been known as the king planet it got its name jupiter and in other cultures it was zeus and jupiter was the king of the gods the king of the pantheon it's always been the symbol of kingship and ruling and authority and of course this is long before anyone knew that jupiter was the largest planet in our solar system it was this big massive giant planet out there and of course no one knew that when the planet was given its name probably because the people that looked up and saw this bright uh wandering star that's what a planet is it's a star that's wandering and these these cultures looked up and and saw the star wandering through the heavens and and said you know there's something we're sensing about that planet that symbolizes kingship and ruling and reigning and of course it, it's been that way since man has remembered anything that jupiter was the symbol of kingship some of you are familiar even with some of the work that's been done about trying to locate what the star of bethlehem was you know what was that star was it a comet was it a planet and there's some really good resources out there i think about the dvd called the star of bethlehem there's another one called the bethlehem star project all talking about what were the signs in the heavens right as as jesus is being born and in one of those dvds i believe it is the the star of bethlehem dvd the man that did this research said you know he he saw that right around you know 3 bc 2 bc we see jupiter and it starts circling cir circling the star regulus which is in the constellation leo and why would that be significant well because jupiter is the king planet regulus is actually a star which means king that's what the name regulus means and it's a bright star in the constellation leo which is a lion which also has to do with kingship so right as jesus is being born there's this sign of kingship where jupiter goes around regulus three times it, it's something called retrograde motion which if you're interested in why the planets do that and all the kind of celestial geometry at work by all means just google retrograde you know motion with planets and you'll see for yourself why the planet appears to move backwards and forwards you know as it's tracking its path in the night sky but just looking at the you know at, at, at astronomy software which you're seeing of course right now it can show you what was happening you know when jesus was being born when he's coming into the world and the whole point there is the magi who are looking up at the sky for signs would have seen this as this declaration of kingship and to them they knew hey messiah is born and then of course the big sign that occurs is a conjunction between jupiter and venus and it's almost like uh, you know jupiter and venus looked like they were one object in the sky and, and uh because they got so close that to the naked eye it would have looked like they had even touched now venus a symbol of womanhood maternity uh you know birthing possibly jupiter this the symbol of kingship and you get this idea of a sign in the heavens of the king being born so here's some of the things that uh, the magi were aware of that were pointing to the king coming into the world so when we see something happening with jupiter even going back to comet shoemaker levy 9 we have to start wondering what is what is the sky saying what is heaven saying about the king or about kingship what does it mean for a comet to appear now let's take a minute and just think about comets historically not always a good thing and in fact for many many cultures almost unanimously a comet was a sign of bad things are coming it was a portent of doom 
It was a it was a symbol of, oh no, the heavens have been disrupted. You know, when you're thinking of the sky above you as this, uh, you know, almost like the image of what's going on in heaven. And that's really what it is. That's what it's there for. Then you look up there and you want it to be perfect and unchanging and unmoving. And then when some new presence comes into this firmament above your head, things would seem very out of order, very scary. You wouldn't know what's happening. So historically, comets have been a symbol of change, sometimes misfortune of doom, all of these things. A, a wonderful historical example is when William the Conqueror, and I believe it's 1066, and he conquers England, and I believe it's King Harold in England, and they see this comet overhead, and of course, of course King Harold thinks it's a bad sign, and uh, I believe within a year he was ousted as the king, and William the Conqueror, William of Normandy, came in and became the new king of England. There are so many stories of things like that happening. So we have this sense of comets uh, being a, being a, a, a bringer of change and, and typically some bad change. Now for us, I think anytime we see things in the heavens, is, is there a potential that it could be saying, watch out, bad things are coming? Of course. But for us that are in the kingdom, that, that, that are in this story of redemption, I'm not so sure that we should ever think that anything is like a portent of doom, even if it it is, in essence, a portent of doom. For us, there's probably a silver lining to everything. So maybe a way to look at comets, uh, not in the ways that cultures did that maybe didn't have a full picture of who we are in the Lord, who we are in Christ. Maybe the right way to look at a comet is that it is a, a symbol of change. Now here's the interesting thing about what happened with comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. It wasn't the only comet to come around right about then. In 1994, comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 breaks into 21 pieces. They all crash into Jupiter. And then the very next year, another comet is discovered. And then the next year, it's another one. Right after Shoemaker-Levy 9 had this big impact that the whole world saw, we had comet Hayataki. And actually, I believe that was discovered second, but appeared first. Sometimes it takes a while for comets to get here. And then in 1997, we had comet Hale-Bopp. And these were amazingly beautiful and bright comets. Comet Hayataki, the one that you're looking at now, beautiful, bright comet. I remember watching this in 1996. I was a senior in high school. We were in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I used to go out to this park where the sky was a little darker. And I could watch this comet for hours. The tail of this comet was so long. Uh, to this day, many amateur astronomers and professional astronomers alike still think Comet Hayataki is the most beautiful, splendid, spectacular comet they've ever seen. I mean, the tail just seemed to stretch half the length of the sky above your head. The blues and the colors that you're seeing in the picture, totally noticeable. And then the year after that, we had Comet Hale-Bopp, which had maybe a shorter tail, but was very, very bright. And again, very, very publicized. Now, the, the difference between us today and, say, cultures that lived before the scientific revolution, which took place in the 1600s, is that today someone says comet, and we don't think anything of it. We're used to thinking of comets the way that the scientists have told us, you know, what they are as objects that they're these dirty snowballs. They're a bunch of ice and dust, and when they get close to the sun, they start to burn up. And you know they, they flare out and the gases come off and you get these wonderful, spectacular streams of, of a comet tail coming off and how all of that works. We get the science of it. The problem with the scientific revolution, the problem with seeing everything as an empty object is that we miss 98% of human history that would see those lights in the sky as something so much more. And I'm telling you, friends, that if it was good enough to tell the wise men, the magi, that Jesus had been born, then the firmament should be telling us things too. It's not just objects. Stars aren't just, you know, balls of nuclear fusing, flaming gas. There's so much more to the story of life and existence than the objects that we see. It's what's within those objects, the meaning of those objects, 
that's where all the the truth is where all the life is so as we're talking about what these events might be telling us we have to think of the within of life we have to think past just the object and to what it might actually mean for us so let's make a few conclusions before we move on if we see three major comet events and we're not just thinking like western american civilization that's sort of written off you know everything that they that's unknown that they can't see but we started to think more like 98 percent of human history and we realized that if one comet is a symbol of change what might three comets be telling us and if one comet we're able to see with our our new eyes through the telescopes if one comet the first one breaks up into 21 pieces and each one of those pieces smashes into the king planet what might we think well this is just my opinion i could be very wrong about this but this is what i think it might be pointing to i think in 21 years from that impact we should be watching jupiter and we should be looking for a massive change well friends 21 years from 1994 is 2015 and in the next video blog I'm going to show you what's happening with Jupiter in 2015 and then what's happening for the next two or three years all the way to 2017 where there are some other amazing astronomical signs taking place so stay tuned for these video blogs we're going to walk you through what's happening in the sky because I think we're about to experience a very important window of transition. And I do think something's about to happen. And we're going to have to look at it together to decide, is it something? Is it nothing? Do we know? Do we not know? Are we just guessing? What's our best guess? But right now, just think about this. Anybody before 1600, maybe even anybody before the 1700s, would have seen one comet as a massive symbol of change. We saw three. We saw one of them separate into 21 pieces and literally illuminate the king planet. That was in 1994 and then in 96 and in 97. So here we are in 2015, 21 years later. The question is, what's about to happen? Stay tuned, friends.